Hi, welcome back to my channel and my review for Saltburn. So this is the new Emerald Fennell film and the story here is about these two young guys who start forming this connection while studying at Oxford University together. And one of the guys, Felix, he comes from this very wealthy background. His family owned this great big estate back home. And as he starts to grow closer with this other lad, Oliver, he ends up deciding to invite him back to stay with him and his family back at his home for the summer. So I was really excited for Saul Byrne. I was a big fan of Promising Young Woman that Emerald Fennell did a couple of years ago now. And it's just the trailers here that really got me intrigued. You know, it's all about showing you that vibe and that atmosphere you're going to get throughout this story, but without giving away any of the really crazy plot directions that this goes in. And, you know, this, this film is all about surprising you and shocking you, and it will do just that. So many points of this movie, I had no idea what was about to happen, and you just can't take your eyes off the screen because it's all so unsettling, intriguing, and just such a fascinating ride to go on. You know, I was thinking towards the end, how the film started, I couldn't believe the story we started out with and where it had got to because it goes to some very wild places. And I actually saw this over a week ago now, I saw it in the cinema, I wanted to get my review out, but I came down sick with something so I couldn't do it. But I'm actually glad that I've had a week now to sit with this film because the more and more I've thought about it, it's it's just really lingered with me and I'm really dying now to kind of go back and revisit this and I'm starting to think now it's actually probably one of the best films I've seen this year but if not that it's certainly one of the most unique you're going to see this year that's for sure. So one of the big draws to this story is the two leads so you've got Barry Keoghan playing Oliver and he is absolutely phenomenal here. You know, this guy, I've been obsessed with him recently. He's a real master of playing these kind of very complex and mysterious characters. For anyone that's seen Killing of a Sacred Deer will know exactly what I'm talking about because he is so convincing at playing these people that will have completely different sides to them, whether it be showing a very vulnerable side or someone who's quite secretive or also someone who's very confident, quite scary at times as well. He is just a master at showing all of these things together in one person. And this is a role where he gets to demonstrate absolutely everything in his acting ability. So he is just absolutely fascinating to watch. And also I found it really interesting, the dynamic between him and Felix, Jacob Elordi's character. And he's actually an actor that I've never seen in anything before, but he's a character that definitely could have been very unlikable, given that, you know, he's from this very wealthy family of people that are quite deluded and you know, they're all they all kind of show very arrogant sides to them at times, including this character of Felix. But he's not unlikable because this actor just knows how to bring so much charm to the role and there's something very likable about him and you know because this this film is very dialogue heavy as well it's very important that you're intrigued by these two characters and just seeing the kind of the the chat between them and how they start to develop this connection where you're not sure whether they're just friends or whether there's something romantic going on uh it's very very interesting to see how it plays out and keeps you completely engaged in the story something i really loved about this as the story was going on was that in the first half despite the fact that there's no real indication that there's anything particularly strange going on there's just a constant sense of unease and discomfort about the film like as you're going along you just have that kind of whole sense of dread that something bad is going to happen and I think that really is down to a lot of the stylistic choices that Emerald Fennell has made whilst filming this you know like you have a lot of these very kind of wide open shots that are showing all this beautiful scenery and they're these kind of really striking images but at the same time you just have that sense that something isn't right about it. It, it. To be honest, a lot of it actually reminded me of The Shining. And I know she's a massive fan of this film. So when, when Oliver first arrives at this estate, just the way it looks, the way it's filmed, it will definitely give you vibes of the Overlook Hotel and everything from that down to the, the strange butler as well and the way they're greeted and brought in. Uh, it's Yeah, there's something just fascinating about that. She's definitely drawn influence on films like that but while still having very much its own unique feel about it as well. 
there's another particular film I think that people are going to draw a lot of comparisons to with this one, which I won't mention here because I actually think that it's almost a spoiler for the story to start talking about the comparisons to this film. But something about it I'll say that, this, that makes this the better version of that film I'm thinking of is the fact that despite being a very dark and twisted story, there's also a lot of fun to be had here as well. Like, especially when you get introduced to this very eccentric family and, you know, the parents, they're played by Richard E. Grant and Rosamund Pike. And, you know, they've got this very kind of dry humour about them and they can play these very ridiculous over-the-top characters whilst taking themselves seriously within the story. And it, it just comes across really funny. You know, it really did have the cinema I was in, laughing at a load of moments. And... Some of the really crazy places it go to actually end up being quite funny just because of how uncomfortable it is to watch. So there is definitely that sense of fun about the film. And I think that one, uh, this that will make it more rewatchable than this film I'm comparing it to, I think. There is definitely some themes that the film is tackling, you know, like obsession obviously being the main one uh, that's shown between these main two characters. But also it's talking a little bit about class and stuff like that as well. And something I liked about this one, which I would say over Promising Young Woman, is I, despite me loving that film, I think potentially the way it was talking about its themes maybe got a little bit heavy handed at some moments. Like some of the choices that were used in the story, I thought, oh, you know, it's good, but, and it's, it's, it's telling a very specific vision, but you couldn't help but feel it was a little bit heavy handed in some parts of it. Whereas here, it's quite subtle how it's done. And. I think one of the main ones she was going for here is obviously talking about, you know, kind of focusing on this family that's very wealthy uh, and, you know, almost out of touch with real life. You know, it's kind of showing these very sort of um, these deluded characters living completely in their own world, especially with the character that Carrie Mulligan is playing. She has like almost like a bit of a, it almost feels like a cameo in this film and her character, like everything she's trying to do with that. It feels like they're trying to show how untouched these people are. And in doing that, they kind of allow this kind of poison into their home uh, that ends up infecting everything. And it's because they aren't seeing, you know, they're not aware of other things going on. And I thought that was really quite interesting. You know, if you compare, you know, when you look at other things in life, like with the royals and, you know, the high class in Britain and stuff, and you kind of, you get that vibe in interviews and whatever that, they aren't speaking or thinking like normal people. And I think that's kind of what she's trying to almost poke fun at a little bit within this story. But I think it was done in such a subtle way that it was interesting that it was there, but without giving you that feeling that it was just overly heavy handed. I think if there was literally anything small I was going to pick at, once I got to the end of this story and you have all the uh, twist reveals and everything, there's maybe a couple of moments at the beginning in hindsight that don't entirely make sense, I don't think. Or if they do, they haven't been very clearly explained. I think there's a couple of inconsistencies, maybe, in regards to a particular character that I think, once you've seen everything, don't entirely make sense. And again, I'm really trying hard to skate around spoilers here. And this might be something I take back on rewatch. Because, you know, when you rewatch a film that has twist story directions and stuff you end up seeing all of the million little details you saw the first time but this was definitely something that at the end I remember looking back on and thinking hmm I'm not entirely sure that made sense everything there but again I'll have to maybe reconsider that when I go back to re-watching this. So yeah I'm really highly recommending you go and see Saltburn. I honestly think the only people that won't enjoy this are people that find it probably too shocking. You know, there are a number of moments here that definitely had people squirming in their seats and sort of uncomfortably laughing at the showing that I was in. So if you're the sort of person that gets uncomfortable watching long, drawn-out, really weird sexual scenes, this might not be for you. Uh, but for everyone else, I would say absolutely still go and see this whilst it's still out because it's one of the most unique films we've had this year and it's going to be very high up on my list of film of recommendations that I've seen throughout the whole of 2023 and I really feel like with Emerald Fennell she's one to watch um, I think everybody should be really excited for her third film she's definitely one of the most um, you know unique and standout directors we have working today
So thanks very much for watching my review of Saltburn and please do let me know in the comments what you thought of this one if you've seen it. Do try and keep it as spoiler free as you can as well as obviously a lot of people watching this will still want to go into it fairly blind. Uh, but highly recommend you go and see this. It's definitely one of the standout films this year for me I think and one to definitely not be missed before it leaves the cinemas at the end of this year. So yeah, highly recommend you go and see this one. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.